without further ado, let's go to Mr. Scott Hampton and see what kind of birdhouse he is going to make for us. Trey, can you set Scott up for co-host, please? Unmute myself first. There we go. Right. While we're setting up, folks, let me mention, we'd like you to hold your questions, comments, or anything else until we get this demonstration complete. Scott always allow a little time for questions and and some some banting uh, or kidding if we can. Um, and what we'll learn from it, stick with us. Scott, good evening, sir. Welcome and thank you. Welcome to my shop here in California. Glad to see everybody here. We're going to make a birdhouse today. I was scheduled the middle of May, but they kind of sweet talked me into doing this one. So. <laughs> So this is what we're going to be making today. Let me turn that around. There we go. This is a nice little finial type birdhouse, a long roof and a little robin up on the, on the perch there. So without further ado, let's go switch over to my overhead camera. There we go. Uh, I need to adjust my mice. I got my arrow pointing right in the middle of that camera. And I don't want that. All right, so what this is, is just a regular two, two inch diameter poplar dowel you buy at your local hardware store. I, I, I really like the, the whiteness of the, the wood. That's why I, I like to choose this kind. It doesn't really fade. It might get a little dark streaks, which is okay. But once you spray it with a, like an acrylic type of a, finish on it, it usually pretty much stays this color. So, and you can see I've already drilled a three eighths inch hole for the opening and a very small hole. I'm not sure on the size that matches the size of the perch. So whatever size your perch is, just drill a small hole for that one. But three eighths is a pretty good size for this size of a birdhouse. What I do want to do is grab my small roughing gouge and I do want to true this up, get a little more balanced and crank it up to about, yeah, it's around 2000 RPMs. And I'm just gonna start on the inside here and just work my way towards the end. And just a couple of peeling cuts. It's safer to do these towards the headstock. So you're not by pushing your tool towards the headstock. And by just like looking at the horizon, you can tell it's pretty much balanced now. So what I do is just drill a hole in the center. That's how I do my hollowing on these. It's quick and easy. So what I want to do is put a little divot in here for the drill bit first. That way the drill bit can find the, the center of the piece of blank, the blank there without wandering around too much. And I just need to turn down my lathe to a proper speed for drilling. Yeah, it's about 400. Bring my tail stock up. I got this all set to go. This is a one and a half inch Forstner bit with sawtooth. Think about these Forstner bits the sawtooth works great going into end grain like this. Oh, we got, I lost. Oh, what happened to my, there it is. Focus went out for a second. I'm going to find a different view. There we go. That's a better view. That way you guys can see the top and the bottom there. The sawtooth type of uh, Forstner bit's great for end grain. And the straight blade type is great for side grain. If anybody was fam familiar with uh, Forstner bits, that's, that's the best option you have for getting the best and easiest cut hole. So I'm just, I've already measured how deep I want to go by putting a piece of tape on here. And this wood is pretty dry. And I can also see that the, I've already turned past the opening. That's where I want to go. So I'm just going to pull this back out. 
I probably don't need it to go quite as deep as that tape that's got it. Ah, I'm locked there. Man, I really need to take apart my tail stock and do some lubricating on this thing. It's sounding rougher and rougher all the time. Okay, so I need to go just a little bit deeper. So I'm, so I'm just flush with it right now. So I want to go a little bit deeper with it. Please ask questions while you're, if you, if you like, that's, there we go. Now we're almost to the end of the tape. That should be good. And the reason why I use a small Forstner bit like that is because I want to shape the outside of this somewhat. The first thing I want to do is take this drill bit out of here so my elbow doesn't go plowing into it by accident here. Hey, Scott, why did you drill the holes first rather than after you had it shaped? Uh, it gives it a, it's, it's much thicker this way, less vibration. If I was to go and hollow it, hollowing it, I'm, I'm limited a, as to the shape I want to create on there. So if I if I plowed in there and with a you know a spindle gouge or however you want to, to well, hollow I, I it out, the, I, I meant the entry hole and the perch hole. Why did you drill them first rather than after it's already? Oh oh, because you don't want your drill bit to go through. I've had splintering happen. Once it gets into the inside there, it's just going to go boom and it's going to hit the backside and I can actually blow out the hole cause a crack here. Okay, great. Thanks. So that's what, yeah, I, I want to keep the wood solid before, while you're drilling the entrance holes there. I'm going to bring my tail stock back up, my tool rest back up. And I'm going to grab my large, well, somewhat, it's a small roughing gouge just to get the general shape going here. The lower my tool rest a little bit. There we go. And you want to go, want to start at the highest diameter and work your way into the middle. You just want to work your way back and forth. So I got a lot of wood to take down here, so. And we just clean that up with a couple of back and forth right in the center here. This is just rough turning. This isn't my finished diameter. So I'm gonna stop my lathe. And another thing having that hole right there, as you can see, how thick you're getting. So I can take a little bit more off. It's a little, still a little thick there, but I do need to take a little bit more off towards the roof, so I'll work on that. So I'll work my way down this way. Because these are ornaments, you want to make sure that, you want to try your best to keep them as light as possible. So I'm just gonna remove some of the more of this diameter down. I don't need all of that. Okay, so now I'm just taking some nice slow cuts towards the center here. Basically a large cove. Same thing on this direction here. Okay, by the sound of the wood, I'm getting kind of thin right in here, so I probably want to stop. And we will see where we're at. Okay, yeah, I don't want to go any thinner there. So I'm just going to do a really nice, slow cleanup cut with a spindle gouge here, just to get rid of any rough lines. Same, same type of cut, just work your way towards the middle there. And what's good about this wood too is that I, can, I need to take a little bit off here to match the diameter on the top. Just eyeball it. Doesn't need to be perfect. This, this poplar sands really well and smooth. So 
it's easy to get any tool marks out of it. So I've got a little bit of a kind of a bump right here. So I, there we go. Same right here. The lines kind of show up, barely kissing that bevel on there. Another reason why I use the make a half one and a half inch size hole is so I can put my chuck as pin jaws on it and reverse it instead of using wood. You can use wood to make a jam chuck, sure. But I get into a production mode with these and kind of speeds the process up. So I'm just going to barely lightly sand the inside just to get rid of any roughness in case somebody wants to look through the opening there that quick. All right, then I'll do the same thing on the outside real quick. And I think I need to take a little bit more off right in here. So I'm going to work on that real quick. You see the diameter is not quite matching, so I still want to get a little more down here. There we go. I'm going to round this over a little bit so it seats up against the roof. Let me get to that portion of the of the demo. Okay, so we are all set. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab me a parting tool and part this off. So the body is pretty much done except for shaping the bottom of it. There's a lot, of, a lot of wood. I didn't go all the wood out with the drill bit all the way to the bottom of this. There's, it's just past the opening. So it gives a lot of extra wood to play around with when you reverse turn it. So you just twist this off. And if I wanted to, I can make a jam chuck out of this and just pop that on there and stick it on. Maybe I can do that. Maybe I'll do that now. That way you guys can get an idea of what I'm talking about instead of using my chuck. Just need to grab my calipers here. Measure the inside. There we go. And turn my tool rest around. Turn the speed down a little bit. I'm going to raise the tool rest up. To, I'm just going to mark the diameter. Just kind of eyeball it there. And I pretty much got it where I need it. Shows up pretty easy. So I'm going to grab a pencil so you guys can see that a little. Let's see if I can get a side view of you guys. I'm going to put a shoulder view. There we go. So I'm just going to mark that so you guys can see where I'm aiming for. Readjust the tool rest. Grab my parting tool and start working my way down to that, but not quite all the way. You just want to kind of inch it up there and then we're gonna almost so we're
reason why I've taken off so little right now is that way it gives me a little extra wood in case I make it a little too small, like I did right there, but I can work with that. So I can make a kind of slope this. I just left a little step there. It's, it's either going to be a little too small or a little too big. Making a wooden champ chucks like this can, it's always a hit and miss as far as how to set it up. Get the, so I'm just going to get rid of this part here. I know well, this part is too small. You just want to kiss it with the parting tool until it part just slides right off. Okay. So I'm just going to create a slight taper. You guys can see that taper form in there. I'm going to slide the This will give me a judgment as far as create a, a mark by spinning this on here. And so I got a little mark right there that I can see. It's a little burnish mark. So I can take the parting tool and just cut down into that area there. Want to make sure this part of the wood is flat. Still on that just a little bit. Let me take a little bit more off. And if this doesn't work, I'm just going to switch out my chucks to the pin jaws. So. Okay, I'm almost there. One more cut and we should be popping that puppy right on there. The only problem with using the pin jaws is if you snug it up too high, if I was using the scroll chuck, is you can actually crack the birdhouse. And I'm gonna try to avoid that if you can. Okay. Yeah, this get kind of boring to watch, but this is how you make a jam chucks out of wood. There we go. All right, so I need to work my way towards this area back here. That's where it's hanging up at. This can be a tedious part here. Yes, it can be tedious. All right. So, yep. Just in case. All right. So I'm on there. I just got to get this one. This back corner here is where it's hanging up right there. But it's well worth it. I mean, if you're going to. There we go. Snug up there. You want the shoulders the top of the birdhouse to hit that shoulder there. Otherwise, it's going to run out of true. Well, the beauty is the hole you drilled is with a force bit. It's going to be a true size each time. So if you go into production, this jam chuck could work for all the other bases you core the same. Yes, that's right. That's why, you know, it, it's smart to just to get it, get it right the first time and then any consequential Birdhouses you make with that same diameter, you can use this jam chuck. You might have to fit it a little bit. This wood does move. Oh, well, but... that's what toilet tissue is good for. <laughs> so I need to remove this little divot right here. 
Lower my tool rest down. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm just going to do some pull cuts here. I'm going to leave this area as flat as I can right in the center here and then a little ways out so the, the finial on the bottom will rest on that flat. Then I'll do some pull cuts here just to round over the bottom. Give it a little shape there. And then do a slight push cut towards the center again, just to, just to clean up that corner, make it nice and sharp detail. Yeah, so we got ourselves a the bottom of the birdhouse. You can see the shape of it forming there. I'm just going to grab that sandpaper and just go over this rough part here real quick. This is just 180 just to get rid of any of the small tool marks. I ain't too worried about sanding where the finial goes. A little roughness actually helps the glue key to the wood. Yeah, so now I can just keep this jam chuck. I'll just mark it birdhouse and I will know that that's what it fits. So. So that's on there, as you can see the bottom of it there. It's all nice and flat. So now what I need to do is just drill a small hole for the finial. So I just need to grab my, my drill chuck jaws here. And I need to take this drill chuck out. I was going to say, that's a big finial. Yeah, I, I just want, you know. No, 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 I'm changing the drill bits. Don't worry. I want to see B roll out, the B roll outtakes of this one. Uh. <laughs> All right. And I need to back this off again. I still need to make the, the divot. It's like I did. I did the top of the birdhouse. Keep the keep this from the drill bit from wandering too much. Ah, uh, she's out around a little bit. Yeah. So let me see if it's, I can. Uh, it's not seated all the way back. Yeah, it's not seated all the way up against there. I just saw that black little line. There we go. That should do it. There we are. Yeah, always make sure this is running true before you drill a hole like this makes a difference doesn't it yes if it's the hole's not straight your finial's not going to line up straight so it's going to look up kind of awkward come on there we go doesn't need to go all the way through that's, that'll do it right there. And we just pop that off. So now we got a nice little hole for the finial. And it's nice and smooth on the inside of that birdhouse too. So, so now we can move on to making the roof. And I can do two things for you guys. I'm not sure if you guys, what you wanna, wanna see. Um, I can use this. Nice block of wood here. I can use this, it's called sugar pine. And then if you want, I can burn it and put colored wax into the grain. So what do you guys want to The First one. I like first one. Colored wood. All right, we'll, we'll do that then. So let's, let me, uh, yep, I want to work. I'm just going to stick this in here and I'm just going to true up this end and put a, put a tenon on it. 
That's good. Things first, we need to true this up. Just my tool rest. Make sure everything's locked down. Got that small roughing gouge again. I'm at about 2,000 RPMs. And it makes that speed makes cutting these corners off. The five, the five is like to turn it. I mean, if I was doing like 600 or something, you'd hear the difference. Like, hear that? That is a rough cut. So if you turn up the speed, it's more like a sawtooth going through the wood. So you can tell the difference there. There's some pill cuts towards the head stock. And we'll see how round we've got it here. We got a little bit more to go. So I can do some peeling cuts here. Turn it up a little faster. Tell by the sound when you're pretty much getting round. Now we got, uh, see, that's a pretty piece of wood and it's cut really nice. So what I want to do now is just create a, want to reverse turn this into the chuck. Get rid of that other square there. And I might want to mount that in there real quick. I'm not sure if this is going to, I'm gonna, I need to measure something real quick here. I'm just measuring to see if I can get a good. The pinning on the end of this. It might be too small already. Yeah. Okay, I can get it to oh, it. Must be just a little bit larger than one and a half. So let me see. One and a half, and it probably is a little bit bigger than that. That's but really close. So I might just leave it in the chuck like this and just turn it. I should be able to do that fine. All right, so I want to true up the top end here. Just get that unevenness out of it. Yep, I'm on the right camera there. Let's see if I can. Oh, my camera went off. Oh, that's weird. I lost a camera view. Which one did I lose? Side view, overhead view. Uh, okay, so strange. It, that is really weird. My cameras are. <laughs> there we go. How's that? That'll work. So what I want to do is I'm just going to make a nice pointy hat here. So I'm just going to grab this roughing gouge one more time. I use it a lot for making birdhouses. Give it a spin. Make sure everything's locked down. Nothing's going to hit the scroll chuck here. I need to lower this down a little bit. Well, this ain't going to work. I'm going to grab me my large 
Spindle gouge, it'll probably do a better job of this. Set it back a little bit. There we go. So it's not running on the bevel there. Yeah, this is working better than the roughing gouge was. And you just want to work your way incrementally. You don't want to take start way back here and try to take one big massive cut to create this shape. So you're just going to pull your blank right out of the stroke chuck doing that. Now I just need to work our way from here towards the top, make it a little pointier and a little pointer as we go, adjusting the shape. Just slow it down towards the end there. Okay, so now I need to grab my parting tool and just put a little divot in the end so I can drill a really small hole so I can put a I hook in the end. So we have something to hang the birdhouse from. Uh, I'm gonna grab my pin vise has a really small drill and fit in it. And this one right here. Let's get rid of some of that. And we just stick it right in that center there and just go whoop that quick. Make sure you go in straight in and out or you will snap that drill bit off in the hole, which is something you want to try to avoid. So, okay, so I'm going to angle my full rest a little bit better. I need to lower it a little more. And I'm going to do one final pass or two here just to clean this up. Nice and slow. This is a half inch detail gouge. It's really a shallow flute on it. So I really like it for cuts like this. And we got a really nice cut there. So I don't think I need to do anything. Oh, that is one smooth cut. I don't think I need to do any sanding whatsoever on that. So next thing you want to do is grab your parting tool, measure the diameter of your inside of your, it's pretty much one and a half inches. It should be right there. Yep. And we're going to use this just to cut the roof down to where it creates a tenon so it fits down just a little bit down inside the, the opening here. There we go. Right down in there. Move a couple of these things out of the way so I'm not crashing into my tools and knocking them off. All right, so. Got my calipers that ready ready to go. I'm gonna start the measuring back here with the because if I make it too small, this will allow me to move up a little a little ways. Ah, gotta watch those chuck jaws. And I probably made it. Ooh, I'm just probably just about there. Okay, just a couple more slight cuts. So I can cut a little bit this off here. Even it up. And work your way down again. Always turn off your lathe when you're putting these on your... You don't want to do this when the piece is moving. Send them flying up into your head or across the shop or something. You guys can see what I'm doing there. Just evening that up and then I'm coming back here to make a deeper cut again. I mean, it can be a little smaller. You don't want it real snug because the wood's going to move. Yeah, I can see where I'm just about there. So I'm just going to take a little more off here. And 
There we go. Just a little enough play for the glue to rest in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a, a bevel going the opposite direction here. All right, now a trick to making this fit in the top of the, the birdhouse is I use a very small parting tool and it's cut at a slant. So I can, you guys can see this a little bit better over the black. You guys can probably see that. Yep. It, that way I, I'll bring it into the, into the bottom of the roof on a slant. And when it gets to the bottom where that tenon is, the idea is to have this sit right on the flat of that tenon. But this helps make the, the roof, oh, ah, there you go. There's something in that wood that's being grabby. Okay, that's that dark piece right there. I'm gonna clean that up. I'm gonna use my, try my best with my larger parting tool because that did not sound like it was like in that hard portion of this wood, so. Just undercut it. And there we go. That was my tool hitting my jaws. Usually I got a little bit of a longer piece of wood on here, but this, this wood was so nice, I didn't want to. And now I'm just leveling it out towards the bottom there. Yeah, let's see if I got any bites out of that. Okay, got a little bit of a tear out right there where the tool still hit this. So I'm just gonna still got plenty to play with here, so I got rid of that. All right, so you both grab me a eye hook. Yeah, silver one will look nice in this one. I get these at Hobby Lobby if anybody's interested. And I don't glue the eye hooks in. They usually, they're pretty good at staying in on their own if, as long as you drill the hole, it's right size. This allows you to, on, if you got it hanging like an ornament, you can twist the birdhouse a little bit this way or that way using the eye hook so you can get the opening facing you instead of away from you on a, maybe on a Christmas tree or something, so. All right, so I'm gonna grab me my narrow parting tool. As you can notice, I'm not doing any finishing because that, that'll just take a while for it to dry, so. And I'm just going back and forth, opening up that hole so that the parting tool doesn't bind. And that should be good enough for me just to twist it off. You'll never see that. You'll never see that once it's glued in there. So we got, let's get rid of that picture there. So we got that part of the birdhouse done. So now we got to do is the finial. So I was thinking just using a small piece of walnut, a one by one piece. I need to change my chuck jaws or my chuck out. Grab the chuck that has the pin jaws in it. So I can do walnut or cedar. Which do you guys want to see? Walnut. Cedar's pretty. Walnut? Cedar. All right. <laughs> cedar. Cedar. Well, Cedar's on. pretty. Huh? Oh, come on. Okay. So we got cedar going. That's what I heard the most. So I got cedar. a nice piece of nice piece of red cedar here to make the finial out of. It'll give it a nice color on the bottom. So you don't want to bottom it out all the way. You want it to, in these pen jaws, you need to bring it out a little bit. That way it runs true. Out just a little bit more, give me a little more 
play room there. No, what you was The cap get a little bit more trued up. There we go. Good enough. I like making finials. I with my birdhouses and my Christmas ornaments. I probably make over two hundred finials a year. Even Cindy Droza says she doesn't even come close to making that many. <laughs> That's what she told me. She says she probably makes, she might make like 20 or 30 a year. Surprised me, but. Yeah, it is surprising. <laughs> so I get into production mode when I start making finials. I make them all different shapes and sizes. All right. Do you, so stand, to, do you standardize the tenon? I mean, do you just make them and then how, how do you fit them to pieces? I use the same drill bit. Like if I'm making a, oh, where is one? If I'm making it like, let's see here. If I'm making one of these, I use the same drill, size drill to drill the hole in the bottom of this. And then hollow it through that hole, and then the tenons all can be the same size. Okay, so what the, size? What, what drill bit and what size are your tenons then? If you're standardizing them like that. Well, for the birdhouse, let me grab that drill bit here. It's still in there. I believe it's a be a three eighths inch. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's a three eighths inch. Okay, great, thanks. Yep. For the birdhouses, though, for that finial, I have to drill through there. That that's more like a five eighths because I need a larger opening to be able to to hollow out the inside of the ornament before I put the finial on. All right, so all that cleared out of the way. We got that. You're all set to, so I need to lower my tool rest just a little bit for this tool. Can you switch your camera, Scott? Down really quick here. Can you switch your camera, Scott? Oh, sorry. That's better, huh? Here we go. Yeah, there's a grumpy old so guy in there. So I'm just cutting this down, making it round. This is a one by one square block of cedar. So that I usually start all my finials with. And I never, a lot of people do it, but I don't support the, the far, the tail stock when I make my finials. I haven't found the need to do it. I know they make like, things that can go in, in your tail stock to help support it and stuff. But what I found, because I make my finial so thin that if I even have a little bit of support from the tail stock, it actually causes it to whip around instead of just letting it hang out there loose. Now I'm just uh, getting a rough kind of just want to spread that out a little bit there it's amazing what you could do with a small small roughing gouge there so now I'm going to grab me a couple of small nah, where are they probably still in the drawer here all right, so I got a very small detail gouge. I think it's like quarter inch or about that. So what I wanna do is I wanna bring my full rest around here 
And I'm just going to have my tool facing straight up and just give it a turn while at the same time pushing it in a little bit. Okay. And I'm just going to tap that with some really light sandpaper on the end here. Just get rid of any slight pull marks that the roughing gouge might have left. So as you can see, I already got the, the first little detail in it. And if while you're sanding, you want to, you want to make a little bit of sand, work your way down, sand some more so you're not putting any pressure on a really thin area. So what I need to do now is grab me a smaller spindle gouge here. And take a bit more of this away with it. And I'm just going to stop right there for now, and I'm going to start working my way towards the headstock. I don't want to make a really long finial on for the bottom of this. That it'll overpower what the birdhouse And you guys can kind of see how thin I'm getting there. It looks bigger on the camera than it actually is here on the shop. And come back here, clean this up. And this is where I would come in and I would roll the sandpaper around like a little circle like that and just give it a nice little rub there. You don't want to use really heavy sandpaper, just a fine 240 or 320 to start with would work. So I can start working on this end. I'm going to just kind of dive in with this tool here and Give it a nice little detail there. And then I'm going to create a cove. Using the round, just following it through. It's like you would a cove, just work your way towards the center there, back and forth. All right, so now I'm going to put a little bit of a detail here by bringing the, by turning my tool pretty much at three o'clock. Strike like that, create like a little divot. And I'm going to grab my small, small detail gouge and clean up going the other direction here, getting a little further down inside. Kind of. Give that a little bit of a shape right here, kind of a cove. And it looks like I still got a little bit of a bump right here. So I'm just gonna tap it real quick. A lot of this can be taken out with your sandpaper. I like to use walnut, maple, or cedar for the, the birdhouse. Finials, they turn really nice and they're easy to sand and finish sand and finish. So all right, so see how that looks when the blade's not running. That looks pretty nice. So I need to adjust my tool rest one more time. And what I want to do now is grab my turn that off. I want to measure the that square area I've created on the bottom of the birdhouse. This should be about right. Oh. 
it'll do for now. I can always put the body of the bird house back on that jam chuck and make that little square spot a little bit smaller. So I did go a little short on the diameter here. That's the plus size is you haven't glued anything together yet. So. That's true. So I'm going to start. Just taking this down a little bit. Again, I'm going to put like a little chamfer on here. Then what I need to do is measure that with the calipers again, measure the small hole or the drill bit, either way. I like to drill the holes of more than the drill bit because sometimes the, the, the hole can get a little bit bigger than you want when you're drilling it. So this is where the tenon is going to go on the bottom of the birdhouse. So got my calipers there. Again, I'm going to start back here. Once I get into like production mode during the day, I usually don't, I can just stop measuring pretty much or get really close to the right size without having to stop and check, stop and check. Your eyes will adjust to the right side. Okay, we're, we're dead on right there. Can't get any closer than that. So now we just wanna start Nice light cuts here. And again, I, I did like an undercut under under the the birdhouse here, so it'll fit flush on the bottom of the. So it looks like it might be a little too big at this end. Yep. So I'm going to grab that small. Should be able to get this to work now. Let's bring it the tool rest up. That small parting tool here. Make sure that the grind is facing the right way. And we can just level all that out. And we will grab the calipers one more time, the lathe off. Just check that size. Okay, we are good to go. So I'm just gonna grab me my parting tool and pop that off of there. Ah, come on. And this should fit in the bottom. Let me move some of the stuff to the side here so you guys can see a little bit better. Let me grab a, a white piece of paper here so you guys can see this on the way. We got the various pieces. And I also already have a bird on a perch. All set to go in there. So as you can see, we got the pinion will fit in there pretty nicely there. Now it sits nice and flush on the bottom there. I'll probably put it back on the jam chuck and clean up where that little flat is still showing. You would want to put the roof on there just like that. And then we put the little, I would naturally glue this all together when it's time. But. Where do you get the birds? I get them at Hobby Lobby in okay. the in the dollhouse section. You can they also get them, them at Michael's. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah, I like these. These are hard. That they Like craft supplies and stuff, they sell 
birds, but they're all they're made out of paper and they don't have the detail as these do. So that's why I prefer these. And then you would just adjust where you want the roof, you know, the, the colors and whatnot. So there you go. You got yourself a, a birdhouse with a finial. Very nice. Very nice indeed. That's just Jim Dandy. Hope you guys Good like job. it. Nice Hope you done. guys learned a little Thanks. something. Very nice. Thank you. Great job. You're very welcome. Uh, Thank you, Scott. I really appreciate it.